he's got a definite line coming there. And I could probably even sketch that in now. Just kind of sketch it in with my brown. He's got a, a very defined cheekbone. A very defined area in there. Very defined darkened area in here. And that shadow falls off into here. So I'm going to go to my larger brush and just kind of smooth that out a little bit more. Uh, kind of smooth it all out in there. Now I almost got too much white going on up in here. I don't want I don't want it totally white, but I don't want it totally colored either. And if this were taken with a, here too, I'm working off of a vintage, I'm working off a photocopy of a vintage photo. So I imagine that this picture of this man was taken with a camera in the 1890s. If I was working off of a picture that was taken with the technology that we have today, he might turn out totally different. I'm going to kind of bring that into the background a little bit more. too wet to kind of dry it off. Now I think I'm going to come in with this black color and put in the shadow, more shadow on his eyes. Put in these definite shadows in here. Maybe right in here with his hairline underneath of his ear up here on his where that wave of his hair is and I'm just kind of sketching I'm not trying to do definite drawing shapes I'm just kind of moving my pencil along trying to maintain the the essence that he's that it's hair, you know, maybe some lines in here. Um, very dark, darkened areas in here. Don't want to mess this up too much, but it does need to be a little darker. And of course his ear now has kind of got lost in here. So let's go in and put in this hairline in here. And I think up in here a little more. It's just more or less a talking to yourself, saying here and change this and do that. Now, I do want to darken his eyes. I've left his eyes alone. And he has very little white showing on that photograph. It's a tiny photograph. He's got a lot of dark definition here coming up, kind of arching, and then kind of swooping down there. Or this one is more kind of arches this way and then flat and then comes this way. More shadow in there, but I need to be careful. I'm just kind of putting some marks there. And then there's, you can barely see his ear over here. And a very definite jawline there and a very definite uh, line in here and a very definite jawline up in here. So let's kind of put this in shadow there. Yeah. 
maybe a little bit more shading down in here on his face. Now, because I know his beard comes, I'm just going to put in some lines. And maybe some darkened shadow down in here to help define that. That's this area there. So can you hear what I'm thinking while I do this? For those of you who are still with me. Let's see, I think I want to, I have too much, I can see the lines of my pencils and I want to soften those out. So I'm just going to use my brush to kind of soften that color and blot it. Now, I'm pretty happy with this. I think the only thing I want to do is I want to make his eyes darker. I'm going to go to my ink pen to do that. It just By darkening them, I give them more definition. Although you can't really see the whites of his eyes here. You, there's that very, very faint eyelid and more of a defined eyelid over here. This entire eye is almost filled with his eye, his, it's just very dark. And then his, he's got a very defined eyebrow here, kind of, he's, he's probably, I would guess, in his 40s, because I'm starting to see lines around the corner of his eyes. Now, the nose... I'm very reluctant to touch the nose, but I need to define it just a little bit more. Just a hint of the nostrils here. And there's that hint of that line there. And then I'll, I'll take my just a very thin line to define his mouth. And he's got those two little corner edges to his mouth. I like that. I'm going to use my water brush again. And I want to make this area darker. I could even use my big, my biggie. It's the Velo. Because this, this here again will help define the shape of his face. And let's do that with his coat. Let's just put in broad black areas just to kind of help shape the body, the coat, and give you a sense that he's seated on this page. Yeah. And maybe even up in here. Just some marks. A hair. Now I'm going to soften that a little bit more with my color. I'm just about thinking I'm just about done here. I'm just going to soften these marks. With water. And sometimes, I'll, sometimes I'll wet my brush and then I'll brush it off so that I don't have a puddle of water. And here I'm just coming in and this is the hair that kind of falls down and falls down underneath of his ear here. The same way over here on this side of his face. That may be too much. <clears throat> but I do like that. I'm ready to quit, I think. I think if I do too much more to it, that I will... I will overwork it. Maybe a little bit more definition of his cheekbone. A little bit more definition of his cheekbone in here. Not 
not totally dark like that. Just a little bit more shading. His eyes are a little darker underneath his eyebrow. A little bit darker in here. But I think at this point I'm going to leave it. There's certainly a lot more you could do on it, but I'm going to call that a skadoodle. Now, what I usually do at this point is I'll sign it. I like to sign my work. Where's my R2 pen? I like to sign my work, and I don't just write a little teeny signature down there. I put my name on it. I did this on January 31st. Actually, it's January 30th, but I'm going to date it the 31st. Except for one thing I think I'm going to do on this one. I think I'm going to put a blue instead of gold. I'm going to put a blue. Now, when I'm working in my little book, what I typically do is take a paper towel and put underneath of the page so it doesn't go on the page underneath. Not perfect at doing that. Now I'm going to use this is blue speedball screen printing ink. It says opaque fabric, but I use it on my papers because I love the shine, I love the feel of it. And I use this sort of a laid out craft brush to do that. And I'm going, even though it doesn't have blue, it has white, but I'm going to add some blue around the edges just because I feel like it. It adds a little color. Uh, copper would be nice. A metallic copper would be nice, but I kind of like the blue. And if you do that across all your pages, if you're working in a series of a book like I did on this, that gold border around all of these pages ties this entire book together. And that's kind of what I'm doing here, only though only this probably will not go into a book. And then I just kind of blot it on the sides. You can see my black is fading into that there. That's okay. I like that. Now, since I don't have... Let's put the paper towel on the bottom of it. Here. And just carefully, sometimes I do it thinner at the top because I've got the head in there. And then in the corners, I'll do it a little bit thicker. And I just kind of make little brush marks. Just kind of frames it out. There. There you go. There's my skadoodle. Here's the finished piece. I'm very happy with it. It's not a photorealistic drawing and that it looks exactly like him and I will say that there are different ways to approach this this is how I approached it you could grid out you could grid out this entire picture and mechanically I say mechanically because you're gridding and you're saying okay this part is in this square and so on here I have to do it on the corresponding square to me that's a, a mechanical drawing to me it is not using your hand and training your hand and your eye to see what you're seeing there. You can learn by gridding. You can learn the different relationships of the eyes to the ears and that type of thing. I'm not disparaging gridding, but when I draw, I like to I like to train my hand and my eye and it's a it's a growth process. It isn't something that, unless you're a very innate, talented person, that you're just going to sit down and do in one drawing. You, I say practice, practice, practice. So, And I call these skadoodles because I, I feel like this is inspired by this photo, but it, it certainly is not a photographic copy of it. And I don't mean it to be, and I never want it to be, and I'm still wanting to do more to this. I'm wanting to... I'm wanting to touch up his lips here, make them a little darker. So I'm always wanting to do more. Maybe that's too much, but maybe it's not yet either.
so a little darker area maybe underneath of this. See, I am I if I don't quit, I keep going. <laughs> and sometimes I overwork it in a in an attempt to define it like I want it. Uh, I should stop now. So, and I'm going to. I I I I want to work this more, believe me. I I am wanting to do more to this. But I'm going to leave it. I'm going to say this is where I am today. I'm fairly happy with the the nose. But uh, I've got a lot more white area defined on here than it than there is on the photo. I've tried to bring that face out of the page. This is a this is a photocopy of a vintage photo that was taken with a camera probably in the late 1800s. <laughs> So, you know, you, you sometimes you you have to work with that. So I hope that you've enjoyed this. This is kind of like a little mini lesson of how I skadoodle. I will see you on the next page.